Okay, welcome back guys. So now it's time for the whole EP, Villains, the whole Villains EP. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm always excited, I guess. I don't know. I wonder if that's the most used word in um, <laughs> reaction videos. Um, I'm elated. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, I so like I said, I'm, I'm obsessed with OOTD. And I, I'm trying to recall, because I know that I'm always saying that there are some groups where I always like the B-sides more than the title track. I don't know if I can... Yeah, def I definitely can't. I definitely can't say that for Dreamcatcher. Uh, I just love everything. I mean, that's why they're such a. Stand I mean, music is kind of my thing. Like, just my main area of interest, um, and it's something I was deeply involved with, um, like writing about it and stuff back in like the early 2010s. Um, it's one of the main things about me, and it's so interesting. I really feel like I've not felt the way that I feel about Dreamcatcher in years. I think um, not since I discovered my actual favorite band of all time, Slater Kenny. I don't think I don't think that a band's discography has resonated with me in the way that theirs has. So I don't even think I can say that I like their B sides more or title tracks more. I just feel like when I first heard Dreamcatcher, well, when I first got back into them this year, I should say, and I would listen to everything, I just thought these are the coolest fucking people in the world. <laughs> like, I just feel like of all the music I've just been immersed in for 15 years, I don't think, I just, I still have not ever heard anything like them. Um, and that's just in terms of the title track, right? That's just in terms of what is considered their style, their genre, or what they've etched out for themselves in the industry. But then the B-sides along with it has created such a uh, very solid, uh, kind of incredible package um, just for their music altogether. Um, so yeah, I don't think that they're a group I can say that for. I just know that I typically like every Dreamcatcher song. So I guess that's what, where my excitement comes from for the B-sides. All right, so let's get into it. Don't want to talk too long because I know that people don't really like that. So I'm going to start with the intro. Um, and I'm like, I was sitting here trying to remember how OOTD starts because I remember when I heard the intro in the highlight medley, I remember thinking that I felt that it was going to, more than other intros, it was going to have a very nice transition into the title track. So, uh, yeah, let's see. All right. It is on mute. There's no way! I just, I was just talking about Nine Inch Nails. I was just talking about how some elements of, um, uh, some elements of OOTD's instrumentation reminds me of some Nine Inch Nails. And now you've got this 80s synth. Oh my goodness. Okay, sorry. That's just almost like Trans Am, but that's something different. But whatever. Uh, tra listen to Trans Am if you couldn't find it. That. Trans Am is not Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> Trans Am is a different band. <laughs> but that also, this also reminds me of a music by a band called Trans Am. years ago I ended up in a motorcycle accident oh oh my god it's literally oh my goodness that's awesome so thank you okay 
that's exactly the kind of sound in general that I give the vibe that I get from what I got from OOTD. It's very, the 80s synth that it, it's like funk, that kind of, it's like a synth bass happening. There are lots of synth, but like bass synth, um, sort of, you know, it's interesting because there's a certain sound that we call futuristic but it's almost signature to the 80s. So that's really, you know, so it's sort of ironic. But when you think about 80s, you think about like computer love and stuff like that, you know? It's a, it's a I guess when it, there was like this really, this first kind of explosion of synth sounds in pop music and funk music, um, and really getting a lot of things from a lot of different areas that don't seem like they should come together. Um, on OTD and then on that, which is like getting something that's sort of like funk, but then also something that's kind of like industrial metal um, or um, synth pop or 80 synth. Um, so th this is such, such, it's so, I love their producers. That, that production team, they're just so cool because they just really pull elements from different genres and just I mean, I think I've said, I've said this before, but they like, they pull things from different genres. That's just like a, a guitar or a certain instrument that's used a certain way in this genre. And thought, why do we bring this in? What can we do with this in rock? Or what can we do with this kind of melodic run, this R&B melodic run? What can we do with this on a, on like a more punk song? Like, it's like, what are you talking about? Like, what the hell is Demian? <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out Demian. And they've come to me with OTD. They've come to me with this stuff. Um, that was a, that intro. So I don't know that it would transition into uh, OTD the way that I thought it would, just because of how it changes up, you know, and it gets into that um, that synth part. But still, very much in the vibe in terms of just what they were going for in OTD, what they were playing around with, the what the producers were playing around with in OTD. Um, yeah, that's a fun intro. I don't know if it's my favorite intro. Um, just, again, I don't, I think My Toys is still, my, either My Toys or Welcome to Dream World, just they are so fucking hard. Well, Welcome to Dream World was so hard. Um, but then My Toys was kind of creepy and eerie and cruel. So I really like that, My Toys that comes in, that vocal part. I don't think anything will beat those for me, but that was really cool really really cool okay now this i'm excited about because i heard a lot of people saying it and i kind of agree from what i heard on the um on the highlight medley that it sort of sounds like something that could have gone on one of their japanese releases um you know it's more of a straightforward or at least in the highlight medley sounded like more of a straightforward rock song and it was uh, an early favorite among the fans after the highlight melee was released and seemed to still be the favorite even though shatter really took off and i think it had a lot to do with the performance so i'm excited to see, to see the performance of shatter but even after the album came out rising still seemed to be the favorite so let's go
All right, this pre-chorus, a new pre-chorus queen is emerging in Honda. No! No! Sorry. Sorry. No way. No way. There is simply no way we're not going back for that. For that Honda. This... I literally said, I want... Okay. I'm sure that anyone who has stumbled upon this video knows who Silver Reacts is. I literally said on his... On a, in a comment under one of his videos, I really want them to let Handan fail. I really want them to let Handan go and stop holding her back because she has an incredible voice and they've only scratched the surface of what she can do. They did six years in, they did a great job with giving her more parts. Um, she's, I heard the, uh, the yesterday that she is kind of getting quite a lot in overall in this album and I was excited. Even that part that she got in OOTD, I remember saying that when she got that first part of that, I guess it was the pre-chorus, um, <laughs> the song structure of OOTD is still something I'm wrapping my head around. But I think it was the pre-chorus pre part, the whole rise, so high, whatever. That part, I was like, that's like a Yu Hyun part. Like I was even surprised to hear her get that. And then sure enough, Yu Hyun gets it later in that song. Wow. My prayers have been answered. All I really, the, my only mild disappointment ever about a Dreamcatcher album is just not enough Hondong. So, oh my goodness. Okay, I just, I'm sorry, I gotta hear that again. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go back to the bridge. I'm just, what the fuck just happened? I'm, okay, I'll, hold on. Oh my, hold on. I'm tripping. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, from that, what, just a, amazing bridge, once again, okay, I get it, we're in the 80s, we're loving it, everything's fantastic, I like it there, and then Sua with the high note, and just, you know what, so that bridge reminds me of, um, you guys ever heard of a group called, okay, actually, I don't even know how to pronounce their name, I don't think I've ever said it out loud, Portishead? It's P-R-T-I-S-H-E-A-D. Okay. Um, some of their kind of, that kind of style of, it feels like there was this period of like, it may be the 90s, early 90s of like sort of mixing, mixing like rock with hip hop in a very strange kind of folky kind of way. I don't know how to explain it, but if you ha if you heard those groups before, you'll know what I mean. Because um, it's like it's it's sort of like rock, but it's not heavy, but it's not exactly poppy because it's eerie. <laughs> and there's definitely like programmed beats and synth in a lot of it, so which very much like hip hop backing tracks, so or hip hop instrumentals. So it's hard to explain, but Hooverphonic. Uh, Portis hit like if you 
know anything about that sort of this strange time period of uh, heavy, heavy genre blending um, in pop music or alternative pop music, I guess, um, that would be really familiar to you. That bridge would be really familiar to you. Wow. Wow. Okay, I get it. I get it. I get why this seems to be the favorite. Oh my god, Honda. Oh my goodness. That was amazing. Okay. Also, I did realize I once again forgot to mute my... Uh, my background music, but truthfully, it really just doesn't play most of the time, even when it's supposed to. So, <laughs> and even if it does, what I've realized is you can barely hear it when I forget to turn it off. So, shouldn't be too much of a problem. That was incredible. The outro of that was incredible. The whole song is a winner. Um, if Shatter, I, if Shatter is going to be better than that, I'm not ready. Oh my god, now I gotta watch. I'm not ready for this performance. Okay. Okay. I can do it. Insomnia have been doing it for over 24 hours now. So I can do it. Two days. Two days people have been living with this. So I can be strong. I can live with it too. <laughs> Make sure it's HD because I don't know. I know I don't know. My music taste isn't always the best. Oh my gosh. Go ahead, Shion.
Ooh. God damn it, Shia. How did I even miss that in the um <laughs> in the studio version? Alright. <clears throat> wow. I am disheveled, sort of. <laughs> Just kidding. Get my headphones right. Oh my god. Fucking I love Dreamcatcher. That's it. That's all I got. That's all I got left in me. I just love Dreamcatcher. Uh, Shatter. I saw something that said this was about um, Medusa. That's interesting. That's a mythology I don't know a ton about. I know something about it. I know enough about it to be a fan um, of the uh, mythical uh, character. But, or mythological. Is it mythical or mythological? Anyway. Um, and there's some, I, I heard, a, I read something really cool that uh, Sheehan says, like, at the end of the song, she says she thinks she's turning into stone, but she just gets the S out, or ST, or whatever. She just gets, like, the first bit of the word out because she turns to stone before she finishes it. So I'm excited to listen out for that. They're just so cool. I mean... God, how do they keep getting cooler? At some point, don't you have to hit a ceiling? I mean, isn't it a bit much at this point? I mean, we they've proven their... They, we get it. We, we get it. You're cool. Just stop. It's too much. I can't take much more. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Love that little snare. Okay, I remember this from the. Hold on, was that, <clears throat> is that correct? That line, um, Gahyeon and Sua? Okay. Okay, that was, I haven't, I don't have any kind of commentary I can provide. Um, that was really, that was definitely unique. I don't think there was 
any way possible to guess where that song was going to go. So I think that now I feel like there's going to be a Demian on every album, which is just a song that is completely unpredictable from one moment to the next. Um, you, there isn't, I don't eat ice, the, the banging on me shatter. I don't know. I'm, I wasn't prepared for that. And I need, and I needed to get used to it. Like, cause I wasn't ready for it. Didn't seem like it fit. I mean, it probably doesn't fit, but I still like it. I like that it's there. There's nowhere else it would go. So if this is where it has to be, then that's where it is. Um, but, and now I get the tweets. I, I saw the tweets. I saw a lot of tweets that kept saying, banging on me. <laughs> I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, so I just assumed that it was reference to something that I hadn't gotten to yet. And, and I was correct. Um, I love that. And I'm, there's choreography and I am scared. Handon. Finally. I mean, it is truly her time to shine. Not just in the MV for OOTD. I mean, the visuals were hers. She won it. She won the visual game in OOTD. And she seems to be winning the distribution game <laughs> on the album so far. Um, I'm happy. I'm happy that she's being utilized because I. she had... So, Dami is my bias for a lot of reasons. But... And, and Shion is incredible. She's absolutely one of the, my favorite singers ever. But Handong actually has my favorite vocal tone in the group. Something that can't be taught. It has nothing to do with capability. It has nothing to do with skill. It is just her natural tone. That is just her tone, her voice, her natural organic speaking voice and singing voice, whatever. Um, that's what I'm talking about. Her tone is my favorite in the group. And then that along with the fact that she has these abilities to, she has range and she can do so much. And we just got little snippets over here and there. We just get a taste of it. Um, it's something that was starting to frustrate me. Um, so this album is making me very, very happy. I'm hearing a lot from Han Dong that I have been dying to hear for a very long time. Okay, let's get into this choreo. So help me goodness. Guy on, get off the floor. This is like modern dance. This is like interpretive modern dance. literally well back when i was in high school whenever there were dance there was dances like this um they would call it modern dance but it's probably it's probably technically uh supposed to be called interpretive dance Oh 
This is so cool. She's like, <laughs> inflamed gums. That's another cool one. I mean, it's it's very interesting. It, it and I'm with it now. It was once again. Sometimes when a song takes you somewhere you don't expect it to go. You just have to get used to it, if you can. I mean, you may not. And I, I, I do feel that possibly a lot of people can't get with with, uh, with sh uh, Shatter, because I do think it's one of the bigger jumps from, like, one vibe to another, which I myself usually have some issues with. Um, but I that was cool. I mean, it just felt like... It did feel like being pulled out of something, but it almost felt... It, it felt intentional, if I'm being honest, like, I think that was, like, having stuff, like, even the lyrics, like, banging on me, shot or whatever, like, it feels very intentional that you were, and it, Medusa, too, like, it felt, it feels intentional that you're being sort of drawn into it, and it feels like it's just almost luring, almost seductive kind of build, and then the chorus comes in, it's like, dun, 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 you know, like, kind of more punchy, more aggressive, so it actually feels quite intentional. Uh, I do like, I like that. I'm definitely, I like that. I like everything so far. I mean, as always, I mean, I kid you not when I say there may be like five Dreamcatcher songs that I just can't rock with out of like a hundred. I mean it. <laughs> so and I'm very lucky. You can't help what you like or don't like. I'm very lucky. I seem to like it all. So, and it's my honest opinion. I've never given anything less. So, man, let's go on to We Are Young. Now, oh, and speaking of that, this might be, I'm, I don't even need to, I know this is going to be my least favorite song because this whole, this kind of, um, like, EDM, like, more pure, straightforward EDM kind of thing is typically just not my thing. Like, I'm not, one of the songs I'm not a fan of is, like, Can't Get You Out of My Mind. Um, even, I, well, I love Silent, I, I do love Silent Night, but I don't really listen to it. So, because, again, I don't really go to songs like that. Uh, Silent Night is definitely... Something I want to hear live, definitely want to experience it live for, for reasons. If you're an insomnia, you know. But um, yeah, so I kind of just know this won't be like my. I know it would, I'm sure I'll like it, but I don't think I'll love it. So we'll see. is building up Uh, so it's more like trance or dubstep. Something for the club. Well, something for the club 10 years ago. I, I, I don't know if that's how they sound in the club now.
<laughs> I should have known it wasn't over. <laughs> These kind of songs never are when you think they are. Ooh. There it is. I knew there was going to be an anthemic moment. You know, a great anthem sort of chant sing along moment. Hold on, because I wasn't expecting Dami. I wasn't even expecting to hear her again. She is not in this album much. And then she comes with the high, some high notes. I feel like I just can feel the sass from Guyon's just I just feel like she was probably well I'm young y'all aren't young <laughs> that was fun again it's not so I'm not gonna listen to that song I mean I'm just keeping it a buck I'm keeping it a buck it's not my thing however I like it if they play it I'm gonna vibe to it I'm gonna move to it but that kind of like yeah the kind of dance dubstep, EDM, anything, electronica, anything that's kind of in the dance area. It's just not something I listen to very often. It's, I used to be really into that. I don't, I don't like to say I've grown out of, because I don't understand how people grow out of genres of music. Um, there's still some I listen to, but I think that I listened to it a lot about 10 years ago because I lived with someone for whom that was their favorite genre of music so I, I listen to a lot of it and I like a lot of it but on my own it's never really been something that I would um like you know would really seek out but um yeah I mean it's cool though it's nice I like it but I don't think I would put it on a playlist I don't think I would listen to it much um but I like that they have it because what I love about again the the diversity in their discography is no joke and them having so many songs, even in that dubstep EDM dance, basically dance, trance. Like it, that's so, I just think that's so cool that they can just keep fleshing it out. They just keep fleshing out their discography and saying that they can do everything and anything. So even if I don't like a song necessarily, um, well, don't love it or don't, you know, feel like I won't listen to it, I still love that they have it. Um, there are reactors I like and they freaking love dance music and they get so hype. <laughs> you know, I watch their Dreamcatcher journey and they get so hype when they get to like, can't get you out of my mind. They go, they, they go wild. Um, or some city pop. I like city pop, but uh, like all day long. Like, you know, I even that is not, not a genre that I seek out quite a bit, but I just love that they have it. Um, because I, I, I just love it. They, they literally just keep saying we can do anything. Anyway, well, another 10 out of 10, another no skip. Um, granted, I might skip We Are Young. I just admitted that. <laughs> but I still would say I still feel like the album's value is like no skips. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to throw... I, I'm so happy I can now listen to everything. So... <laughs> Because I was holding myself back. I didn't watch the showcase. I had to, I was trying to skip through when they were on the radio show. I was trying to like skip through when they were playing their songs. And then between skipping that and then every time I heard a commercial break time, skipping out of that, I basically missed the entire thing. So I have a, at least a few things that I can, even though there's still no subtitles, sometimes I'm so thirsty for content. I will literally watch a whole ass like Korean thing for a group and not know what the hell they're saying. It's Dreamcatcher, oh sorry, it's Dreamcatcher, I just apologize to my mic. It's Dreamcatcher, so it's gonna be amusing even if I don't know the context. So, <laughs> so it's fine. But um, yeah, I'm excited to get into, all, um, into some of the stuff I've been missing. And I'm excited that I can now check out some more things that have popped up um, just in the last 12 hours or so. Uh, yeah, but this is great, I mean, 
please do let me know if you're so inclined in the comments what you think of the album what your um you know what your favorite song is i, I oh i didn't even i asked you guys to do it i didn't even say it i think my favorite song i don't know yet between ootd and rising i don't know yet what's my favorite song i feel like right now just because i'm on such a high from ootd still right now i feel like it's ootd but i i know myself and i know that the excitement is a lot to do with my love my obsession with ootd i don't think i'll ever not love it love it but i do think that over time i'll end up listening to rising more than OOTD because uh, again it's just it's a rock so it's way more of a straightforward rock song it's just a you know without any blending it's really more of a straightforward rock song which at the end of the end of the day is where I tend to what I tend to go to most so I think I, I don't want to say it's my favorite I don't want to say Rising is my favorite I don't want to say OOTD is my favorite right now I'll just say it's a tie between those and then Chatter and then uh We Are Young and no one ever includes the intro, so I guess I won't, but <laughs> I don't know. I guess I would probably say I like the intro just about as much as I like. Honestly, I might even like the intro more than I like. We are young. We are young. I feel like I'm not pronouncing that. Because I just, this was like a really interesting intro. I guess we can't count them because they're like a minute or less. It's kind of a ridiculous thing. It's like, who would ever listen to them? But... I did really like it and I love some of their intros like in a big way you know the goal I know their goal every time is for people to say I wanted that to be a full song like I know that's the goal sometimes but anyway love the message in all of these songs um I always love the messages in Dreamcatcher song but for some reason everything on this album feels really really purposeful and I don't really know why that is um it's the same people writing them uh don't think any of the girls even took part in lyrics this time but for some reason yeah i don't know i don't know what to say. i don't know if it's just because i'm so obsessed with the messaging in o the otd um mv not just the mv um i will say most of if you don't watch the the mv i guess most of otd just sounds like a quote unquote brag song Aside from Dami's rap, where she's literally talking about um, looking for purpose in her life and getting drunk and drunk driving every night and feeling like a monster, I think that kind of gives away what the song is really about. <laughs> um, but if you don't pay attention to that because you're just mesmerized by Dami, and I get that, I guess you could just think the song is more of a brag song. But the video really blew me away with its sort of satirical, critical commentary. And and combined with the lore and of what's you know going on with Arch Enemy 99 so maybe it's because that's where my brain is with Dreamcatcher right now maybe that's why all of these songs are being just like having much more impact but the lyrics of everything just feels very purposeful these these songs feel like they are very profound to me at this moment um yeah so um yeah I loved it. Uh, 10 out of 10. I mean, it's Dreamcatcher. It's o Olander? Olander? <laughs> Maddox. Pepperoni. <laughs> no, no, no. I know his name's probably not Pepperoni, but it looks like Pepperoni. It's the squad, you know? It's the squad. This is what they do. This is what Dreamcatcher does. It's a match made in heaven, and I hope it lasts forever because I'm never disappointed. They've got excellent chemistry they know how to work well together this team knows Dreamcatcher's voices they know what they can do they can they know how hard to push them they know who can do more and I'm glad they finally recognized that Hondong can do more and they gave her more um to do um yeah not a lot of not a lot of Dami but you know what um that's okay that's okay because if that was the sacrifice that needed to be made to get more Hondong and even more guy him. But I don't want to say because unfortunately we had way too too much going on when Hondong wasn't here. So there is a decent chunk of their discography with no Hondong. Um 
So I would say that Guy Hyun did start getting quite a bit a few years ago. But um, yeah, a lot, lot of Han Dong in, on this album. So if, if, if my bias <laughs> had to sacrifice her line distribution so that Dongi can get some more time to shine, I do not mind. I do not mind. I love it. This has been fantastic. And I really hope that they let her do uh, uh, her like cover. I think she wanted to do like a album where she did like Chinese covers of some of the um, Dreamcatcher songs. I wish they would let her do that, but they don't really like to get into extra stuff like that because I think they don't want to release it um, for, I don't know, money reasons. It's always money. It's always got something to do with money or business. So I don't know what the reason is they won't really let her do that. But anyway, this was fantastic. I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud of them. I think this is just another phenomenal release. And I will have my hopes that I always have that this is the one that at least, you know, I don't think any, any just with the way that the market is, I don't think anything's going to have them like blow up. I don't know if that's ever going to happen for them. And if it does, it certainly won't be because of one release, you know, like this. But I do hope it gives them like the scream moment or like a Boca moment, you know, They've had a couple of comebacks that you can see very much impacted and it had, you know, you could see there's a sharp increase in their visibility and their popularity. And I really hope OTD does that because it's got a very, I think, really universal sound to it that I think is quite uh, trendy, but also still very unique and interesting and still very much rock and very much dreamcatcher. So I think it should be pleasing to fans and non-fans alike um, in the way that Scream was. Um, and I suppose Boca as well. Probably the whole Dystopia trilogy. So I really hope that this is what does. I hope this does something great for them. Um, but anyway, I'm out. And I hope you guys are having a good weekend. And I hope you have a good night. Or morning or evening or whatever you're having. Okay, thank you. Bye.